Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I'm Sharon Nath, a doctoral scholar um, in DH at the Indian Institute of Technology, Jodhpur. And I'm accompanied by my colleagues, Anya, Vasundra, and Lavanya. Uh, to present our study titled DRH, What Leads in DH? on visaging the digital humanities space in India. The primary motivation of our study was to critically analyze the existing DH-related discourses and narratives in India, particularly to get a better understanding of the institutional conditions that define the teaching, learning, and practice of DH. During our earliest discussions, one of the main questions that kept Sorry, one of the main questions uh, that kept popping up was the issue of technocentrism in DH. Being a team of one computer science and three humanities scholars, we quickly discovered that narratives of technocentrism may actually be a result of deep-rooted societal values that characterize the nature of education and professional skills in the country. This further exemplifies the curricular and pedagogical structures that the five different categories of institutions follow. As we questioned the curricular, pedagogical, and professional practices in uh, DH prevailing in these academic spaces, the politics of interdisciplinary studies and research in the country also began to unfold, uh, starting from the policy level to uh, their implementation. So we shall begin an, with an overview of the DH landscape in India at present, followed by the methodology used in this study, uh, their outcomes, and some comparative case studies. In the process, we shall also share our own experience as emerging DH scholar in India. And now I invite Anya to uh, come to the podium and take over. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you, Sharnadi. Um, I'd like to start by showing you a very simple visualization. Uh, this is a map that shows locations where institutions in India are offering DH courses it, at some level or in some form or the other. I'd just like to note here two things. Uh, one is that this is not an exhaustive list. And secondly, that this map is based on publicly uh, available data of academic institutions, which means that DH is actually probably um, emerging out of many other spaces in India. Um, and a table over here just to show you the different types of institutions offering different types of courses that are related to DH. Um, similar presentations and um, visualizations have come out in uh, scholarly articles and publications in the past, but our purpose to show you these very simple illustrations is very simple. It's to simply show you that there is a prominent presence of DH in Indian academic institutions. Um, moving on, I'd like to talk a little bit about our methodology. Now that you know that these academic institutions have DH present in India, um, our primary and secondary sources uh, consisted of our data set. Um, our primary sources in, um, included uh, personal interviews with scholars, academicians, and professionals. Um, we tapped into our existing networks, and we chose to talk to people who are designing or are students of courses in DH in India. Our secondary sources include available DH and related course information and course manuals. Um, please excuse me, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> it was a conscious choice to choose a highly qualitative um, data. Um, uh, sorry, it was a highly con conscious choice to use a, a highly qualitative um, data set because we wanted to focus on what are the ground realities and what are the experiences of practitioners in, of DH in India. We wanted to tap into what people who are designing DH courses in India are thinking about and what are the perceptions of the receivers of such courses. Uh, these led us to two um, 
two conclusions, not conclusions, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> this led us to a two-fold um, analysis. One was a thematic analysis that uh, uh, emerged out of um, our conversations with our respondents, and the second was a comparative case analysis. I now invite my uh, colleagues to take over uh, and explain further, and hopefully they'll do a better job than me. <laughs> I think you did a well job. OK, so now that Anya has laid out the work that we did, let's get into the insights that we had gathered. Though the views and experiences we received from our respondents resonated overwhelmingly with our initial inquiries and aspects of those initial inquiries, they also ended up, ended up contradicting those very aspects. So the first aspect that came out to be, and the most prominent themes that have emerged out of our uh, paper and work is uh, curriculum and research practices in academic institutions in India. So while the infrastructural benefits and limitations of the institutions have been extensively discussed in the works done before us, the questions of the role of institution in the formulation of DH shed light on how DH discourse is practiced and is shaped by the visions and goals of the institution itself. In the terms of the nature of DH scholarship that is encouraged or its, uh, or its respective infrastructural support especially mentioning how it is influenced by the accrediting academic bodies like UGC, which is the University Grants Commission, and the NAC, which is National Assessment and Accreditation Council in India. The issue of financial infrastructural support or funding has always been central to DH work globally, uh, which takes us to the next inquiry, which is the type of the institution, which is just a mess right now. <laughs> So the respondents from central universities, private or deemed to be universities and institutions of national importance like IIT, uh, from which we are, shared how universities like IIT or private universities may offer more freedom to experiment with core structures and curriculum, while central universities may relatively be more traditional in how they form these courses and how they would want to approach and introduce DH courses in their university academically. However, it has also contradicted, uh, it has also been contradicted with some of our respondents that it's difficult to say that private universities would take risk with experimentation given the fun, like financial uh, questions in space, unless the courses have been established already before from the central universities. Experimentation paves the way for reimagining humanistic and computational spaces in India and inquiries. So DH courses are now launched not only at higher education, but also graduate and undergraduate level, which poses new questions in what DH would look like. This, get, this gets me into the question of the, rea sorry, the realities and imaginaries of the DH space. So we got an in-depth look at concerns within the DH space. We have talked to practitioners, we have industry practitioners, we have talked to, uh, talked to faculty who have both made our curriculum and have come for guest lectures. We have talked to scholars who directly or indirectly practice, practice DH work, and the core concern was what to learn in the edge. With no blueprint or agreed upon theoretical framework, what and how do you teach the edge? More importantly, who teaches the edge and to whom? Who teach, teaches the teacher to teach the edge? What does the DHR, uh, who does the uh, DHR reach out to? What is, that, uh, what is that they do? But more inter interestingly, who is a DHR? When and how does one become or identify as a digital humanist? These questions were important for many of our respondents, especially young scholars, to envision their place in the DH space, both market space and academia. While many senior accommodations emphasized on the questions of fraternity and solidarity in DH in India for a DH space to both exist and flourish, regardless of the type of institution. Now we move on to the next dominant theme of our conversations, which is interdisciplinarity. We are discussing here the state, the perception, and realities of interdisciplinarity in India. So let me just start by saying it is really hard to, and it's really not easy to practice such a, uh, uh, to practice and make such a space. The core behind, uh, the core reasons behind this has come out to be that the disciplinary boundaries in India are so hard that it leaves very little freedom for scholars to even explore these beyond these boundaries. A level ahead lies a bread and butter question of inter interdisciplinary scholars that where would they be employed, especially in academia? For example, with me also, because I come from computer scientist background and I'm, in, uh, I'm a CS background, I'm a data science uh, background also, but now as a DHO, with a PhD in DHO, my professor has supervised asked me, where are you going to teach? Which department are you going to teach and what is your expertise? 
So while many new courses and spaces foster inter interdisciplinary collaborations and training, one of the main challenges noted to us was the lack of disciplinary crosstalk. This has been mentioned at both the faculty and the student level. People don't talk to each other in the universities also. Scholars mentioned that even if collaboration happens, it is difficult to navigate the space, especially if educators delivering interdisciplinary work and courses are not even trained in that crosstalk. Another major concern that has come out to be is upskilling for both faculties and students. While many respondents mentioned how pleased they were with the newer di uh, directions of programming and technical training in DH, many focus on the perception of upskilling to be just instinctively about technical skills rather than humanities and social sciences skills. But almost all of our respondents, even who said this, emphasize on the importance of critical thinking as well as technical sense to ask, understand, and answer the questions of humanities and technology. But at the same time, facilitating disciplinary talk within the humanities itself was also an interesting point, like Paul Science people talks to sociology, etc. A few, a few senior academics mentioned how they had uh, resorted to self-learning and even networking with, for workshops and talks, etc., as an essential part of doing DH in India. And then there was this major debate of the requirement of a mother or a key discipline of DH, and whether that is necessary for an interdisciplinary work and a product-driven ideology, which is a recurring theme doing for people doing interdisciplinary work, which also has been come up that the scholars feel that it limits them both academically and individually. While this opens up the Pandora box, nuances of future of humanities and DH and technical spaces, what future of DH holds or looks like, let us, another import, let us discuss another important aspect of interdisciplinary in DH, which is collaboration. I'll hand over to Lavanya now. Thank you, Asundra. I think it's time that we talk about the elephant in the room, the idea of collaboration. As the conference title says, and our respondents also see collaboration as an opportunity. The opportunity to learn and share their knowledge work towards similar interests. Many respondents shared that they envision collaborative spaces forming via new projects, preferably funded, and invite scholars. Building on the crosstalk discussions that Vasundra just did, it is important to note how collaboration is also difficult in sciences and humanities spaces. A common question that has come across is how to make people talk of each other's work. Our analysis highlights collaboration allows for blurring of traditional boundaries and DH has given us the space to be open and inclusive. Going back to Lisa Spiro's article of, on the values of DH where she acknowledges the importance of ideas of diversity, inclusion, openness and collaboration. Similarly for us, our respondents, it is important to have an opportunity to collaborate with empathetic practice along with pedagogy of kindness in the first place that can help us draft a more coherent DH community space. Moving on, let's discuss about the future of DH. While many have pointed out the emergence of DH, the future of DH can be seen at different levels. At individual student level, there might be an increase in scholars pursuing degree, but whether or not the professional choices of DH scholars is emerging is still in question. Practitioners and professional and our own discussions also point out the general optimism and potential with respect to DH work. From our literature review as well as our interviews, we have also addressed the future of DH at a policy level. The National Education Policy Clause 11 states, and I quote, on the generation of a more holistic learning in technical institutes, therefore the introduction or focus on liberal arts and humanities thus further making ways for legitimization of the discipline. While IITs and IIMs, being the institute of national importance, introduce DH courses and makes way for legitimization, whether or not they are accepted in the job market is still open to debate. During the interview process, a similar question was raised. Does the what does the future of a DH scholar look like in India? While we ponder upon such question, for starters, there are other questions like what is the type of community, whether it is academic, non-academic, what are the kind of narratives and the context that are being emerging. To sum up, basically, the act of doing DH by learning and the act of doing DH in general does make a difference in how it is perceived. The perception, the institutionalization and legitimization not only thrives from, but also depends on funding received for DH projects, specifically in academic spaces. While we try to make best of the landscape of DH practices in India accessible through these visualization, the true mystery map which we came was this, and uh, 
it was so complicated that we we decided to just talk about different themes and uh, you know lesson of the tentacles now i hand over to my colleague sharanya okay let us now shift our focus from this mess and concentrate on a comparative case study we chose four institutions for this purpose jadavpur university a major state university iit jodhpur and institute of national importance and two private universities christ university lavasa and jindal university haryana the following four slides will be self explanatory however i shall focus on two of the most important aspects of the four types of programs being offered that is the types of courses and academic orientations of their faculty and students audience are specifically requested to note the schools and department within these institutions offering the programs because we think they are specifically important in this context also note that our experience as dh students scholars from it jodhpur uh, you know gives kind of an advantage uh, in terms of understanding how it works there um, so let us start with jadavpur university uh, Uh, the four uh, month uh, pg cert course at ju is a combination of archive specific modules uh, textual material and manuscript centric theory and methods uh, there is also focus on tools and softwares relevant to course content uh, and also they, they also offer niche areas like digital music archiving uh, the focus is on a practical skill based technical course content that is grounded in humanistic inquiries combining the two very prominent departments Departments at JU, that is the humanities and engineering. Uh, followed by, uh, you know, um, uh, when we talk about IIT Jodhpur, uh, the MSc program, it's a two-year pro program, is uh, in, in, ha is divided into uh, tech core, te core tech courses uh, that are primarily programming oriented, uh, including data structures and machine learning offered by core engineering faculty members. Uh, the non-tech core courses. have uh, you know options like methods and methodology in dh seminar courses that are interactive and practice oriented uh, non tech dh specific electives are like new media studies image imagination and digital cultures uh, there are non degree core tech and social science courses as well also an important thing to note is the phd level courses are uh, related to dh that are offered for to all students from btech to phd students uh, which kind of causes some trouble of course um uh, when we talk about christ and ajindal they are you know comparatively new in the field um, uh, christ has recently launched an ma uh, english with Uh, digital humanities um, uh, core program and uh, jindal has a major in an undergraduate program uh, christ university has a combination of traditional and non traditional literature and linguistic courses uh, focusing on a tool centric methods of inquiry um, uh, massive open online courses are integral uh, to their courseware uh, in the first year uh, there are also research methods uh, uh, we found that course structure to be quite targeted uh, jju is an interesting case as they are offering a dh major for their four year liberal arts and humanities undergraduate programs now this is quite interesting um uh, but we could not really find a complete courseware for this specific major uh, from their website and the general course structure for liberal arts we can say that a typical liberal arts uh, degree at the undergraduate level has foundation courses in the first three semesters covering a wide range of humanities and social science courses from the fourth semester onwards students must declare their majors and take the required number of courses and credits supplemented with cross electives uh, the major focus from third year onwards is directed toward an undergraduate thesis sorry sorry I'll quickly talk about what our insights of the faculty and students' academic backgrounds look like. Um, at Jadavpur University, faculty come from uh, a typically traditional humanities background, but there is also a presence of uh, technically trained professionals. Uh, I'd like to note that JU was one of the pioneering institutions of DH in India. Um, IIT J um, has a lot of um, has in-house faculty uh, members with. two affiliations so they do have one core affiliation and then another supplementary one which in this case would be dh um 
it is important to note that again they are traditionally trained in their own um, course in their own traditional disciplines um, and they come together to form um, interdisciplinary courses like DH. Um, DH in IIT Jodhpur is heavily reliant on guest faculty and guest lectures uh, by industry professionals. Uh, this is based on our own experience of being students from IITJ. Uh, as for Christ, since this is offered from the English department, uh, traditionally uh, trained literature and literary studies uh, professionals will be conducting this course. Um, but of course, um, the ground reality might be slightly different. Uh, as for Jindal, um, there is a mix of national and international faculty members, and there is a heavy stress on uh, inculcating interdisciplinarity as a way of thinking uh, through, uh, through encouraging faculty members to conduct interdisciplinarity courses at a foundational level in the first three semesters. Um, as for the students, these courses are marketing, marketing to students from various backgrounds. There is very little limitation to who can join these courses. Um, and uh, what's interesting is that um, these are open to all kinds of people, but it becomes a little complicated uh, if offered at an undergraduate level, because then you are uh, reaching out to students who are graduating from high school. And that's where we sort of uh, segue into how we conceptualize DH in India. Yeah, so in interest of time, I, I, yeah, in interest of time, I would like to conclude with two open questions. Uh, but before that, I would also like to give our acknowledgements to ADHO for giving us a platform where we can present these thoughts and these experiments and these conversations emerging out of India. We would also like to extend our gratitude to the members of 30. Miss Menon is also here, and which has given us a community to connect to DH practitioners across the country. 30 is actually one of the platforms we had used to reach out to these people. A uh, special thanks to IIT Jodhpur's IDRP program, which has been started, in which digital humanities is a part, rather than affiliate, like rather than under another liberal arts or computer sciences de uh, departments. Uh, and last but not the least, we would like to thank the University of Graz for host, uh, hosting us and the organizing committee for helping us throughout the way. Our open questions are, and you can slide the QR code, DRH, what according to you leads? Uh, what level do you think a DH course should be introduced in? Thank you. <laughs>